Yes, but don't worry, just three slides. That was a trick because I didn't want to be on the big screen <laughs> for the entire part of the presentation because I, I don't normally use PowerPoint. And what I would like to discuss with you today, uh, firstly, let me introduce, I'm running because that clock is ticking and it's really making me nervous. <laughs> So I'm Gaetano Dimit, I'm from Queen Mary, I, I'm a lecturer in copyright and I'm actually a big fan of copyright. I love copyright, I believe it's there to protect the most sacred creation of the human mind and it's something we should preserve. However, as a lot of people are going to discuss today, copyright with the advent of networking technologies such as internet, 3G, 4G, is having a little bit of troubles. But these troubles are not uh, new in copyright law. Copyright law is not something static. Copyright is something that evolves constantly in 300 years, most of the time, as a consequence of technological innovation. And from the right of print and reprint, we evolved in this complex system of rights, limitation, and exception. However, copyright as a flow is uh, territorial, is based on different jurisdictions. And the internet, computer technology first and then the internet made copying extremely inexpensive and dissemination of work virtually free. But the big issue is that uh, the internet is not based on territories, it's not based in any jurisdiction. Actually breaks the barrier between different jurisdictions. And we are at this stage in point in the evolution of copyright that we kind of see ourselves uh, in between two opposite choices. One is to reinstate chains from like the last century into the modern technology or accept the copyright has to evolve in such a way to adapt to the borderless nature of the internet. Now, what I want to present to you today is, is a tiny proposal that I've been working on it since 2001 and never had the gut to presenting it in public. And the only reason I'm doing it today is because it's only 10 minutes and you don't have any chance to ask me a question. <laughs> so it's a perfect situation and I really hope you're going to enjoy it. Most of you are going to disagree because it's a really bold academic proposal. But I really hope this is going to point at least uh, the discourse in the right direction. It fills in something that has been around since, uh, since Napsters. You know, all this suggestion coming from academics or, or sometimes from other entities like NGOs, they suggest something like, I don't know, Nathaniel in 2003, I think it was, non-commercial levy system for internet transmission. The global license in France, 2005. The uh, flat rate culture in Germany during 2010. And this proposal has been parallel to internet evolution. My one fit in this uh, pot is based on the same basic assumption. We have to find a way to make the unauthorized non-commercial dissemination of work fit within the copyright system. Because if we try to control that, then we have to undermine technological innovation. <laughs> Now, the answer is really simple to present. Can we find a way to remunerate authors and copyright owners for the dissemination of their work without undermining user rights and technological innovation in this new environment? Can we find a way for which anyone that is connected to a network can freely disseminate without asking for a license? Because asking for a license on a global scale is almost impossible. Consider that every single copyright work involves multiple rights that most of the time have multiple copyright owners in multiple jurisdictions. Plus, imagine a, a 15 years old kid that wants to share his, free, his favorite piece of music on Facebook if he can go through an entire license agreement for a global dissemination. In practice, it will be virtually impossible, and, and global licensing on the internet are really difficult to achieve. So, how do we do it? We have to let people share, at least this is what I would love to do, let people share whatever they want to share, because the key point of the internet, what I was in love with in, since 2001, is the pure decentralization of the dissemination. 
radio and TV, they were easy problem. You have a broadcaster, you have a lot of people listening to. There is one person that decides what are you listening to. You cannot change their programming. With the internet, with file sharing, everyone can disseminate whatever they want. It's a multiple point of origin transmission. And I kind of felt that this decentralization creates a sort of democracy in accessing work. The work that they most share are the work that people want to access. And this is fantastic, this is lovely. There is only one problem, that if everyone freely share, then the person that created, the author, doesn't get any money. So should we stop people from sharing? Or should we find a way, even if it's a really bold suggestion, to make them getting the money? The key point is, can we take the user out of the equation? At this point, with site blocking, uh, enforcement system, uh, educational plan, we're actually trying to imagine a, a world in which every single eight years old kid knows copyright law. And this is impossible. Copyright is complex, it's complex for a reason, because it's protecting something important. But uh, can we actually aspire of having everyone knowing copyright law? You all have a driving license. Do you know how, how a car works in practice? Probably no. It's the same online. You should know about copyright, but not all the technicalities. So what I'm suggesting... Uh, that's why I don't use PowerPoint. I mean, I just... <laughs> what I'm suggesting is an international treaty under the umbrella of WIPO to introduce a new... You love the wall of text. You don't have to read it. I'm just going to give you the flavor of it. I'm suggesting an international treaty to introduce a new right. Copyright, we have already multiple rights, but a new one dedicated exclusively to the non-authorized, user-initiated, non-commercial dissemination of protected works. It's going to be a, a right that cannot be assigned, is in, inalienable, and is a remuneration right in nature. It's crawling out of communication to the public, and it's going to be limited only to what I just described. Someone wanting to share for non-commercial uses a particular piece of work. There is not going to be any license to apply for because it's a remuneration right. And the person sharing will have directly or indirectly to pay. <clears throat> now, how the money gets from the person sharing and paying to the authors whose copyright is entitled to, through a uh, particularly complex, <laughs> because of course simplicity doesn't go well with copyright law, but that general global remuneration agency. You can imagine something like CISAC or something like WIPO, that is, they, they, they deal a lot with international and, and, and cross-regional agreement. You collect the money, the money gets assigned, collecting society, exactly how they work. We could actually use the existing collecting society to collect the money and redistribute it on a global scale. In practice, from a user perspective, you will not have to worry anymore. Could be a way, and this is the point in which I love that you can contradict me now. As a user, you cannot infringe copyright anymore. Because whatever you do, if it's non-commercial and user-initiated, is going to fall in this remuneration system. There are going to be multiple ways to get the money from them. Everyone has a contractual obligation, for instance, with this internet service provider. Money can be collected through that. Money could be collected through advertising. There are multiple and multiple ways. Then we heard from Google, they already have identification system in place and every single collecting society has identification uh, methods in place. The work could be tracked without checking who is sharing it and could be redistributed to the rightful owner. I also have a slide on how the system would work in practice. And uh, if you look at it, and if you're familiar with collecting societies, is exactly how they do it. The only difference of this system is that uh, would be based on an inalienable right, remuneration since the beginning, and uh, on a global scale. Eight seconds. 
I'm really sorry. <laughs> if you have any question, I'm really happy to discuss it. Uh, the paper is going to be out soon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much.